What makes Utah's landscape so iconic, so unusual and strange with these beautiful arches? What is it that made Utah this landscape that we have come to know Utah as? Utah earned its iconic bleached tan sandstone encrusted landscape from its harsh and foreboding history when a widespread desert once covered the American Southwest 200 million years ago. Today we're going to look at the Late Triassic Nugget Formation, a classic sandstone layer that has come to define the American Southwest with its magnificent, magnificent arches and smooth, multicolored rock surface. <laughs> now, before I begin, I have to explain about how geologists name rock formations and how these names can change, be debated, and sometimes lead geologists to contradict themselves. We are humans, and we like to give things names. This is a rock, which does not care if it has a name or not. In vernacular usage, when I say rock formation, you may be thinking of a group of interesting rocks that you could climb on or has an unusual shape, and you would be correct. The English definition of formation is a structure or arrangement of something. However, geologists have a very technical definition for formation with a capital F. A formation is the primary formal unit of lithostratigraphic classification, the only formal unit that can be divided completely on the basis of lithology. So when a geologist map a region of the earth, they are describing the lithology or rock type that you find there in the bedrock. Bedrock is the rock layer that you find below the soil, the alluvium, colluvium, or the loose dirt and sand near the surface. Now these formations are reflected in a geological map as different colors. Each color is a unique formation with a capital F. The Nugget Formation is a quartz aronite. Uh, it's found only here in northeastern Utah and a little bit into Wyoming. In southeastern Utah, there's a similar sandstone unit called the Navajo uh, Formation. And in southwestern Utah, there's another sandstone called the Glen Canyon Formation. Now, all three of these formations are Aeolian deposited, tan colored quartz aronite sandstones. And they could be grouped together maybe as a single formation or group. Now the reason that they're given different names is because each of these regions was historically mapped by different geologists who were unfamiliar with other regions of Utah and came up with a name for each area that they were personally mapping. The Glen Canyon Formation is named after the Glen Canyon, Arizona. 
uh, the Navajo Formation is named after the Navajo Nation in southeastern Utah. And the Nugget Formation, well, it's named after the Nugget Railway Station in southwest Wyoming. Now, there's some evidence that the Nugget Formation is the oldest one, um, with fossils that indicate possibly a late Triassic age. While some geologists place the Glen Canyon Navajo Formations as early Jurassic. Hence the, the nugget likely correlates with the older Wingate sandstone in southern Utah. That's the formation that caps the Triassic Chinle Formation in southern Utah. And the nugget is basically what caps the uh, Chinle Formation here. And these units are the oldest, um, possibly latest Triassic, and maybe extending into the Jurassic. But in these sandstones, we really don't know where the Triassic-Jurassic boundary is, but it's likely within these Aeolian sandstone units. Recent fossil discoveries from a fossil quarry in Dinosaur National Monument pushed the Nugget sandstone to at least the latest Triassic. But really, there's a remaining mystery of exactly where the Triassic-Jurassic boundary is located here in Utah. So today I'm exploring a series of exposures of the formation for any fossils that might give us clues to what animals and plants lived in this vast ancient dune field. It's amazing how this ancient sand is getting reborn, eroded out, and blown away from, from, from the uh, nugget formation. And so this desert that existed here 200 million years ago is a source of another group of sand that's blowing out of, eroding out of this nugget formation being liberated by the blowing of wind and redeposited as modern Aeolian sediments. To see how finely grained these layers of sandstone are. They're just beautiful in terms of the sand forming these wonderful bands. Now this sand, sand accumulates on the lee edge of the sand dune. So as it blows on the front side of the sand dune, the sand moves up and then it drops off the back. And that's where it's preserved. So it'll create bands that aren't necessarily parallel to, to the horizon at the time of deposition, but are tilted up. And oftentimes they're very long and sweeping, going 100 meters long, and these slow sweeping faces of these sand dunes that were blowing. So amazing, cool sandstone. This is what's referred to as a quartz aronite because it's pretty much 100% quartz uh, grains. You don't get many other grains because the process of, of blowing them, being transported by wind, tends to get rid of a lot of the clays that stick and make the muds. And so you're left with only the most resistant of minerals on the surface of the earth, and that is quartz. So there's a cross-cutting relationship there. One dune being deposited on top of another dune. So the cross beds suddenly shift and change. So this is actually really neat. Uh, that red band that you see, you'll note that the orientation of the beds is slightly different. And that red band is actually an oasis. It's a, or a wadi, 
an area that was more moist and so the bedding of that area is more sort of horizontal compared to sort of the wind-blown Eolian sort of deposits that you see over here. One of these lines is a geological instant being uh, preserved wind-blown sand in these ancient sand dunes. One of the interesting things about living in Utah is you get kind of used to these sandstones like this that form these arches. It's just part of the landscape. And I think a lot of times visitors to Utah really appreciate some of these sandstone and escarpments um, like the Nugget Formation and the Glen Canyon and the Navajo sandstones because they're very unique to Utah. There are lots of other places in where you see similar depositions of Eolian formations. But I think that because of these rocks coming up and eroding in these unusual ways and with the current desert environment which creates new sand dunes and a new desert environment for the sandstones to exist in there's just something kind of special and very iconic uh, about the nugget sandstone and other similar formations from the late triassic and early jurassic period these canyons go on for miles and miles and miles, and there's a lot of country yet to explore. We haven't found very many trace fossils or body fossils in the Nugget Formation, as to be expected. Although there are new discoveries being made in this layer of rock of interesting burrows and traces that are made. This is a period of time in which the dinosaurs were starting to become a dominant group of animals living on land. And I'm sure that if we spend enough time in the Nugget Sandstone, we might maybe find some of these, some evidence of some of these early dinosaurs. But maybe not today. Thank you for watching, and I really want to especially thank the Forner Family Foundation, the Utah Fieldhouse Museum in Vernal, Utah, and the United States Bureau of Land Management. And a quick shout out to my few and dedicated Patreon supporters, in particular Justin Bovey and his son, and Pam Gonzalez. Thank you so much.